The Heath Super Chaser range has now been complemented by the MC2, a machine that can collect any size square bale. It runs off the same principles as the popular Super Chaser Extra and QM Extra models. This video will outline the method of preparing the MC2 to collect the varying sizes of bales and the correct manufacturer's recommendations to load and stack them. We'll start by looking at the loading and stacking of 4x4 large Hestons. The instructions for the joystick functions are on the side of the control box. You'll need to position this in the cab of the tractor to refer to as you learn. Power the chaser by placing the spool valve you've chosen into constant pumping. You need to first open the side gate slightly to avoid catching on the bale tines on the forward bale stops. You can then extend the jack legs fully and then open the side gates to the floor. On the headstock, there's a bale clamp on each side which wants to be in the storage location as it is also not required for the loading of 4x4 Hestons. The forward bale stops have a pin on the back of the panel to fix them to the side gates. The grip foot on the middle tine needs to be removed from the chaser and stored away, otherwise it may catch on the strings of the first bale loaded when stacking the chaser. To unfold the chaser from transport position into the working position, first you need to extend the telescopic drawbar. Once this is fully out, lift the deck enough to release the drawbar lock and move the chaser out to its loading position. You can now open the side gates until they hit the stops. Unfold and lower the bale loading frame and retract the carriage to the back of the machine. If you have a hydraulic nudge bar, now would be the time to extend it into the working position. Strike the bale with the nudge bar, push it around 90 degrees and allow it to run alongside the tractor. Once the bale runs alongside the tractor and the tines of the bale loading frame comes into contact with the Heston, rotate the bale with the frame 180 degrees onto the deck of the chaser. Now extend the carriage forwards to pull the tines out of the bale cleanly. Do not use the frame extension. And then unfold the loader frame and lift it vertically to push the placed bale back down the deck of the chaser. Repeat the striking process with the nudge bar to rotate and run it alongside the tractor. When this next bale hits the loader frame, lift the frame all the way up vertically with the bale and then rotate the bale 90 degrees with the frame to place on top of the first bale. To remove the tines from the bale, bring the loader frame back down to the floor and rotate 90 degrees to return back to the start of the process. You can use the side gates to align your bales again on the deck to straighten your load. Once you've put the desired amount of bales on the trailer, close the side gates to grip the bales, leave the tines of the bale frame in the last bale collected to keep them secure and push the bales back with the carriage to squeeze them against the rear pallet forks. Fold the chaser from work position into transport mode and retract the extension drawbar all the way in. Switch off the hydraulics to the chaser and switch off the control box to avoid any accidental unwanted movements. If you have a hydraulic nudge bar, now is the time to retract that, ready for travelling on the road. To create a stack when you enter a field, you need to first put up a head wall. This is a part load of bales on the chaser that will stand on its own and act as a back wall for the full 12 bale loads to sit against. Load six bales on the chaser, one on top of the other, making sure that the sixth bale is stepped back on the fifth. This will allow the bales to split easily when stacking and avoid the sixth bale catching on the step. The seventh and eighth bales want to be placed on individually, one after the other. Remove the bale frame from the last bale and push the load to the back of the chaser. Pull the carriage forward and roll it over to push the bales even further back until they're touching the pallet tines. Once at the stack site and ready to tip, remove the bale loader frame from the bales and bring the carriage all the way to the front until it stops. Open the side gate slightly so they're not touching the bales and extend the jack legs fully to split the bales so they are staggering. Then close the side gates back onto the bales to hold them in place. Reverse up to the position you want the stack to begin. You can tip the chaser part way up so you can see your location more easily. Once you've reached your desired position, tip the chaser all the way vertically. Make sure you don't stop and that the deck goes over centre. It is meant to do this. Once the bales are up in their vertical position, open the side gates so you're not touching the bales. You now need to pull out from the bale stack whilst moving the carriage to the back of the machine. This extends two bale push-off bars out the back of the deck which will aid in letting the bales slide off the pallet forks. Once you're out from underneath the bales, bring the carriage back to the front of the chaser and bring the side gates back into the transport closed position. Lower the deck back to the ground whilst retracting the jack legs back into their home position. You'll notice that the middle time will 
winch itself way back to the front of the machine as you do this. To place the next head roll alongside the first one, you repeat the same process, but this time open the side gate that is next to the last head roll fully to the ground. Tip the bales up, taking care not to be too close or far away from the previous load. You'll notice the bales stand up next to the previous ones and the open side gate should rest alongside comfortably. When pulling away from the stack, remember to close the side gates fully before lowering the deck. Once you've built your stack to the width you require, it is then time to load the chaser with all 12 bales for a full load. Repeat the same process with the side gates, opening to split the load with the jack legs, then closing to hold them in place. Back up to the stack and tip the deck to 45 degrees. Reverse up very slowly until you feel bales touch the head wall. Be very careful and if possible, use someone to spot you as you learn. It's easy to push the head wall over if you're too heavy footed. As you touch the bales, stop the tractor and tip the bales up, letting the tractor come forward as the bales slide down the head wall. This process does take some mastering, but once you've done it a few times, it becomes second nature. The more load you put in a stack, the less delicate you have to be as the stack of bales becomes more solid and stable. It's a personal preference which side you work from when you build a stack. The principle is the same when stacking alongside 12 bales. Now, we'll take a look at loading and stacking 4x3 and smaller bale sizes. To set the MC2 to load all other bale sizes, you need to unpin the forward bale stops from the side gates. Place the bale clamps on each side of the headstocks into the working position and replace the pins and secure. Reattach the grip foot onto the middle tie and locate the securing pin. To load 3x4 bales onto the MC2, open the machine out into its working position and nudge the first bale round 90 degrees to let it run alongside the tractor. Once it's embedded in the tines of the bale fork, rotate the bale 180 degrees onto the bed. Leave the carriage where it is and use the frame extension to pull out the bale cleanly and reopen the bale frame back 180 degrees ready for the next bale. Once you've nudged the second bale round and it becomes embedded in the tines, rotate this one 180 degrees to sit on the extended loader frame in front of the first bale. Once located, lift the loader frame vertically to place the two bales on their edge. Push them past the forward bale stops on the side gates so they are placed on the middle tine grip foot. Remove the tines by unfolding the bale frame 180 degrees out of the bale and retracting the bale frame extension. To build a head wall for 3x4 bales, repeat the process so you have 8 bales loaded and then place another 3 bales individually in front. Pull the bale frame forward and then roll the tines over to push the bales back against the pallet tines. Close the side gates to hold the bale secure and fold up to transport mode. Once at the stack site, open the side gates so they aren't touching the bales and unfold the bale frame. Extend the jack legs to split the bales and then close the side gates to secure the bales in place. Now tip the deck up to 45 degrees. Once you have your chaser reversed to where you want the stack to be, tip the deck all the way up vertically. Make sure it goes over center. It's meant to do this. Open the side gates so the bales are not held and pull away from the stack, pushing the carriage back to enable the bale push-off bars to help slide the pallet tines from under the stack. To place a head wall next to the previous load, make sure you open the obstructing side gates to the floor so it does not come into contact with the stack. Once you've made the stack as wide as you require, head back to the field and load up the chaser with 16 bales. You can get 18 bales on if you desire, but it is recommended only to do this if the stack site is very level and the driver is competent. On returning to the stack site, open the side gates so the forward bale stops are clear of the bales, so when the jack legs extend, the bales do not get damaged by any contact. Once the load is split, close the side gates to hold the bales in place as you tip. Lift the deck up to 45 degrees and reverse up to your head wall slowly until you touch the bales. As the bales touch, let the tractor come forward as you continue to tip the chaser up. Once the bales are in the stack, open the side gates so they're no longer touching the bales and then pull away from the stack using the bale push of bars to enable the bales to slide from under the pallet tines. If you're picking up quadrant bales, then your head wall will have 10 bales loaded, followed by four individuals. A full load will be 20 bales, but the chaser can take 22 if necessary. If you're struggling with the bales not sliding off the tines when pulling out of the stacks, then there's an adjuster on the back of the carriage, which allows hydraulic flow to the rams inside the bale push-off bars. 
This will allow the push-off bars to extend the full distance of the pallet tines, thus letting the chaser completely clear the bales, mainly necessary when stacking on concrete or very firm conditions. Please remember that operating a chaser well takes practice and patience. If you follow the instructions on this video, you'll become an expert of clearing bales quickly and efficiently using the Heath Super Chaser MC2.